We'll talk to Jonathan Gilliam about what's being done to protect Americans this New Year's Eve. Developing tonight, New York City taking unprecedented security measures for New Year's Eve. That means 7,000 police officers on the streets and 65 sand-filled trucks. But will it be enough to guarantee a secure New Year's Eve like we've seen in the past and avoid attacks like we've seen in Europe? Joining me now, the man who oversaw the FBI's special event security in 2010, former Navy SEAL Jonathan Gilliam. Good to see you, sir. Good to be here. Uh, all right, so New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're right, we're right in the heart of it right here. We're right in the heart of it. You walk around, the crowds are so thick already. That's right. You can only imagine Saturday night. Mm -hmm. it, I imagine it's a daunting task to ensure the safety and security of the thousands of people that will be in those streets. Millions of people. Millions. They're, they're estimating two million people wow. this year in Times Square alone. Now, we're one block off of it, and as we come in, people look behind you, and they see Radio City Music Hall and the, and the big picture of what's going on live down there. What I see as an attacker is I see soft targets. I see soft targets develop, and I see them dissipate. And that's what people have to realize is that as an attacker, as a terrorist, what they're looking for are soft targets to develop. They're looking for the information that you already know by being in and around the area is that you're at on a daily basis and in this case a special event. I can't even imagine what it's like to coordinate with 7,000 mm -hmm. police officers. I mean what does that even look like and what if something does go wrong? Well, it's highly coordinated with the NYPD because they're really a, a, a militarized unit. I mean, they're they're the, uh, the, the biggest law enforcement agency in the world and almost as big uh, or bigger than most militaries in, in the world. So they're organized. But here's the key to this is that even the NYPD cannot secure everything. In, in Times Square, it's a frozen zone. They're going to have like 65 sand trucks set up to keep uh, large trucks from crashing in there. But it's up to the American citizens that are in there and the people visiting visiting to ask two questions. When, where, and how can attack happen? Think like an attacker and then look in that direction and look to see if you see anything odd. The other thing, the other question you have to ask is how do I avoid these these areas because immediately after Times Square, the other thing that NYPD is incredible yeah. at doing is getting two million people out of Times Square. And that's where the soft targets develop everywhere. So you have to try to avoid those targets. I mean, and, and, and as far as the threat level is concerned, I mean, mm -hmm. we're at the highest threat level, you know, that, that we've been since the last time you were right. in this sort of security machine. I would just rather people forget about the security threat and just assume that we are always under a threat and so an attack is possible what do you anytime. say to people? say, I don't know, should we really go out there? Go out, but be smart. You have to think like an attacker and you have to be able to look and say before you go there and say, if there's something that happens, I'm going to go this way and I'm going to get out of it because you're thinking, where would an attack come from? Well, you did a fantastic job back in 2010. I'm sure New York City is, is prepared and ready yep. for this. It's, a, it's a, a very American moment. So. And you have the best of the best out there, but you also have the most prepared citizenry that are free, and they have the ability to think like they want to think, think like an attacker tomorrow. All right, Jonathan Gilliam, thanks you for being it. here.